Breaking tonight, two big stories unfolding right now. First, the State Department at this very moment, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, is releasing after dark, some 7,000 new emails in the scandal over Hillary Clinton's use of a special private account. These are supposed to include more than 150 emails containing what Hillary Clinton claimed was not in there, namely classified information. That was all supposed to exist only on the more secure federal networks, and now we know she had it in our home in Chappaqua. Our research teams are in place right now. They are starting to go through the documents, and our own Ed Henry is here with what they have found very shortly. Plus, after a Texas deputy is gunned down in what appears to be a, a cold-blooded execution, the Black Lives Matter movement takes to the airwaves tonight saying, don't blame us. It is unfortunate that Hickman is using this situation to, uh, to politicize his grievance against uh, a movement centered on ending violence and holding police accountable uh, for their actions. Sheriff Ron Hickman today had to speak with the widow of the young deputy who was killed. He will join us in moments with a response for this group. But first. Also breaking tonight, new fallout from a big shakeup in the Republican presidential race. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. A new poll out of the Hawkeye State suddenly finds national frontrunner Donald Trump in a dead heat with Dr. Ben Carson. Monmouth University finding Trump and Carson are now tied for first place in Iowa, the state that will be first to make its presidential preferences known. The two men followed by Carly Fiorina, Ted Cruz, and Scott Walker, who incidentally was leading this same poll just about a month ago. His numbers have sharply declined. And did you notice, however, what these top three contenders have in common? They are all political outsiders. Chris Steyerwalt is our Fox News digital politics editor, and Howie Kurtz is host of Fox News' Media Buzz. Gentlemen, welcome to you, Chris. Dr. Carson making a dent in Trumpapalooza which is, you know, he's ahead of in every national poll and has been winning in Iowa for some time now. And what a turn for Dr. Carson. Well, given the fact that the, uh, I've been told about one bajillion times in the last six weeks that Republicans are angry racists, it seems surprising that a mild manner, mild mannered, kindly African American doctor uh, is increasingly the number one preference of this party. So I think the media narrative, not to take how, not to poach in Howie's turf, but I think the media narrative about this election has been is wrong. And I think that uh, Carson's rise as a kind, very uh, conscientious, patriotic soul, uh, it tells us a lot about the attitude here. And I think it has everything to do with what you said, which is this is an electorate. This is a party that wants anything but somebody who represents more of the same. OK, so the, the one narrative has been it's angry white Republicans who sure. who are, are behind Donald Trump. But you know what? They're apparently behind Ben Carson. So your point is the narrative that it's all these racist Republicans isn't really holding up. The second point, though, to, that to your point is the other narrative we've heard about Trump's rise in the poll polls um, ha has been about how the they, they are angry and they want someone who is angry. Forget race, it, that their, their anger is reflected in the rhetoric of Donald Trump. Dr. Carson could not be, you know, he's pretty kind and gentle in his approach. Right. He's obviously uh, fed up when you listen to him, when you talk to him, if you, when you get, as you've interviewed him. He obviously, when he was doing his takedown on the Black Lives Matter movement, it wasn't like he was a shrinking violet. But the way that he talks and, he, and the way he comports himself is wholly different, not only from politicians, but also from his fellow Iowa frontrunner, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. It's a total study in contrast, and they're both, and it both seems to be working right now. All right. However, Howie, Dr. Carson has said some controversial things. It hasn't been all <laughs> kind and gentle. I mean, like the whole stuff about like prison makes you gay. And, you know, he has a lot of rhetoric about President Obama that he speaks to like Saul Alinsky and Lenin and so on. And that's you know, a lot of people believe that. But it's also controversial. And when Ben Carson made those mistakes in the early months, I thought, OK, this is a very nice guy who's out of his depth. He talked about Obamacare equaling slavery and so forth. But he learned from those mistakes, Megan. When I interviewed him, he told me that he realized that if he used that kind of incendiary language, people didn't hear him. They didn't hear the rest of the answer. And so he has fixed that problem, which uh, I think threatened to undermine his candidacy early on. What has happened, Chris, in the past 
two weeks to, to shoot him to the top of the polls. We had the Republican debate, and Ben Carson did very well in the polls thereafter. They clearly liked his debate performance. But what's happened in the past week or so to justify this equal footing between Carson and Trump now? Well, you have this August entropy. You have Trump, who has uh, blown everybody's doors off. All of the people who have held office, uh, elective office now or before, have been dwarfed. And everything is topsy-turvy. And people are looking at this anew. And I do think it's hard to overstate how well Carson did in the eyes of voters who were just meeting him for the first time. There is no Republican politician who is more popular. And don't mean that they all are voting for him as their first choice, but there is no Republican politician more popular in the state of Iowa and maybe nationally now than Dr. Ben Carson. He's in Iowa. They, he has almost a universally positive opinion of him. At 81% of Iowans have a positive opinion of Dr. Ben Carson. Uh, Carly Fiorina, 67% favorable. Donald Trump, 52% favorable. Um, so it means that a lot of Iowans don't necessarily like Mr. Trump, but they're still behind him. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is politics today. Howie, let me ask you, uh, you say that he hasn't come under the scrutiny necessarily, that he was a front runner, but has anybody in the Repu Republican field? There's so many of them. How could anybody be subjected to so much scrutiny? <laughs> It is true. There aren't enough reporters on the planet to cover all of these candidates. But I think Ben Carson, to a certain degree, has flown under the media radar, getting about one thousandth of the attention uh, lavished on that Trump guy. And that has helped him position himself as somebody who could be, uh, let's say, a less bombastic alternative for people who fed mm -hmm. up with traditional politicians. But the lack of media scrutiny based on this poll and this attention, Megan, I guarantee you it is going to change soon. I got to ask you, Chris Tyrewalt, about Scott Walker. Yikes. Down at seven percent. He was leading this poll in July. What happened? Well, he and Marco Rubio find themselves, uh, as they have been all along, guys who are trying to bridge the gap between a conservative base of the Republican Party that's also acceptable uh, to the establishment. That's a hard place to fly. But both for Walker and for Rubio, the game is going to be long. So keep your eye on both of them uh, to, to show up later. All right, guys. And I'll keep my eye on you two to show up later as well. And that's just a special yes, tease for the audience. They'll find out we later. Will. Well, we mentioned the breaking news at the top of the hour, how the Black Lives Matter group is now pushing back after taking serious heat following the execution-style murder of a Texas deputy and then the march the next day that looked like this. We'll show you what that group is now saying about this chance tonight. Then we'll speak with Sheriff Hickman, who today had to speak with the widow of that slain officer. Plus, moments ago, the State Department releasing thousands of Hillary Clinton's emails. It happened at 9 p.m. Eastern that she had kept secret on her private email server for years. We're pouring through the material right now, trying to figure out why we have an after dark release of this stuff. Hmm, I'm sure it's nothing that has anybody concerned. Ed Henry is here with a live report on what we're finding. And Republican presidential candidate Carly Fiorina fighting hard to get onto the main stage of the next presidential debate. The Kelly file breaks down her chances of doing it. And if she's successful, who's out? Coming up. It's outrageous. By the way, this is a Republican primary. You'd think that the RNC would play some leadership role here.